So I am presenting on my own workbench and uh, you may be curious as to what Workbench can do. Workbench is a tool that lets you manage content in um, Islandora or Drupal more generally, uh, but um, we're talking today about Islandora. Um, uh, it can create single file objects plus metadata and compound and page contents. In fact, it can um, create, help you create pages and compound content in a couple of different ways. Um, it can add exist media to existing nodes. So you've already got nodes around there, or you have a node ID, uh, and you can uh, use this tool to batch upload um, media to attach to those nodes. You can update existing metadata and nodes and delete uh, and nodes and media. Under the more category of what it can do that's useful, interesting, uh, you can also use it to, uh, uh, when you're ingesting or updating content, you can create uh, URL aliases for that content, for example. This might be useful if you want the old Islandora URLs to continue to work, even though we're, you're moving from a PID-based um, URL in Islandora 7 to a node ID-based URL in Islandora 8. Uh, you can do that with Workbench. You can also um, upload when you're creating nodes. You can configure Workbench to let you add new taxonomy terms uh, to those nodes on the fly, uh, if you'd like. You can also configure it to not allow that if you don't want your users who are com uh, compiling your CSV metadata that you're adding to be able to add terms that are not authorized. So uh, it can do all those things. So what is the distinguishing feature between this tool, which sounds a lot like Drupal Migrate, uh, and I would say that Drupal Migrate in general, uh, to use it, you will need some kind of access to your Drupal server's command line. Um, as uh, Melissa has demonstrated in her awesome Islander Quick Lesson uh, batch ingest with Migrate, you, don't, you may not actually need to log in and type commands on the command line. You will need to upload files to the Drupal server to use Migrate in most cases. Um, but in general, uh, uh, you will need to interact in some way with the Drupal server's command line if you're going to use Drupal Migrate um, at some point. Islander Workbench is specifically designed to run to not require that. It is specifically designed to run from anywhere. You do not need to have command line access or FTP or SFTP access to your Drupal server. Um, it is meant to run on laptops, on dedicated processing workstations, um, or anywhere else that you uh, uh, want to run it. This uh, provides the added benefit that you can manipulate your, prepare and manipulate your files and whatnot that you want to become media on your local workstation um, and, and, and tweak and test those as you go along as opposed to uploading files uh, multiple times and whatnot. So how does it work? Uh, Three basic steps. You need a CSV file that uh, encapsulates and expresses your metadata and the location of any files you want to attach to nodes you're creating. Um, little snippet there to show that how that works. That is not, this meta, the CSV file is not exotic and not complicated. Um, it's much like any other CSV file you might use with any other system. Uh, you will need to create a configuration file. And this is probably the hardest part and the most complex and scary looking part. Um, but again, to distinguish uh, Workbench from Drupal Migrate, you only need to create one configuration file with um, Workbench, whereas you'll end up creating multiple uh, YAML configuration files with, uh, to use uh, Drupal Migrate. Um, just to look at the details in this sample configuration uh, file, um, we have a task, which is in this case create, but uh, the other tasks that Workbench supports are update, delete, and that it refers to nodes or around or descriptions, um, or add and delete media. I won't go into the other options at this point, but if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them at the end of this brief presentation, or if you want to go to the Workbench um, GitHub README, uh, all of the options that you would ever need to put in a configuration file are documented there in, in detail. The third step is you run Workbench. It is a command line uh, tool at this point, uh, uh, and, uh, even though, again, it doesn't need to be run on the command line of the server where Drupal is running. 
It can be run on any command line. It is written in Python, which means it is fairly cross-platform. You can run it on Windows laptops, Mac laptops, what have you. Um, and that command that I'm showing there is how complicated it gets. There are no other command line options um, other than one more, which I'll describe in a second. All of the configuration options for a particular job within Workbench are expressed in the configuration file, which in this case is myconfig.yml. Um, the fourth, the, the option that I just referenced uh, would be a fourth step in this um, slide, and that is to check your configuration. And you simply add dash dash check to the end of that command there uh, shown in uh, the third step. What that does is instead of actually pushing your content up into Islandora, uh, that uh, if you tell it to check your configuration, it will, it will validate all of the choices you made in your configuration file validate the structure and consistency of your CSV file and that all of the, the images and PDFs and whatnot you've referenced in your CS file actually exist where you say they exist. And in total, there's about 15 different checks that uh, Workbench will perform if you tell it to check your configuration file, your configuration. And uh, a, a pattern that you will run it, you will adopt quickly uh, is you will configure Workbench um, then you'll run the check on it and fix anything that Workbench uh, reports and run it again in check mode until you have all green, nothing, nothing that Workbench has detected that may cause you problems. Once you've done that, then you actually run was shown in, uh, in uh, step three here, which is the, the command to tell Workbench to push that stuff up into your island door. Um, so even though Workbench is a command line application, uh, we have the ability and we have done some work already to uh, provide a what you see is what you get or WYSIWYG, I guess you could call it a graphical user interface that sits on top of the Workbench command line application, um, allowing the user to not deal with uh, uh, messy command line at all if they, if they wish not to but to do all the tasks they need to do within a graphical user interface, albeit a simple one. And this particular inter uh, screenshot you see here is a poorly uh, mocked up um, rendition of um, the, the uh, under our Workbench desktop as it currently exists. Um, as you can see, there's a one row CSV or spreadsheet editor here um, that uh, also exists in prototype mode, um, not, not in, functioning, not in fully production ready mode, of course. Um, but uh, this is the dream is to have a desktop application that people can use that lets them create and update metadata in situ in the desktop application, check their configuration, and actually run the task in this case, for example, push it up to Islandora. Um, so uh, that's, that's underway. It's still a proof of concept at this point. Um, but uh, we will have it someday if we put our minds and effort to it. Uh, right now, what we have in Islander Workbench, we don't really have a fully fleshed out CSV editor, but we do have something to prove that it's actually possible to run the Workbench command line application uh, via this kind of environment. And what we see here in these two simple screenshots on the left, we have Workbench checking the configuration of a, of a, of a, a job, saying everything's cool. And on the right, we have the results of uploading five images to Islandora, uh, uh, saying everything is, is fine. So that was a very quick overview of what Islandora Workbench is and what it can do. And I'd like to spend the rest of my time uh, giving you an overview of some of the interesting workflows that uh, we can deploy it in. First one is simple batch loading. This is not exotic or in interesting even. It's just um, using it as I've described so far. You, you assemble your CSV metadata and your, your the files you want to become media, your images, JPEGs, videos, or what have you. And you run up Workbench and it pushes that stuff up into Islandora. Um, but an interesting workflow that is, again, not specific to Workbench, you can do this with, media, with um, people migrate, but something that I think people will find useful um, to do from the desktops is to do what I call distributed batch loading. In this case, you, a user, one user, say metadata expert, creates a CSV file, pushes it up to Alandora and creates nodes. 
no media at this point. But what you can tell uh, Workbench to do is, via simple configuration option, is write out a, another CSV file that has the node IDs uh, corresponding to the nodes that have been created for a given row in my input CSV. So in that case, you now got another CSV file that has the node IDs and some simple metadata uh, that you can use to then add the media in a batch. And you can do that as an entirely second and subsequent step compared to the first one. So in this case, you could have your metadata experts create the nodes and you could have your um, digitization staff or someone else upload the media at a later date if you want to. Um, this one, this workflow I call mediated migrations and uh, uh, it basically it is uh, a, just a variation of the, the first batch uploading, but instead of creating the CSV file and the accompanying media from scratch or new, uh, you get them out of a source platform, whether it's content DM, um, Island or seven, what have you. And um, I want to thank our colleagues from Whitman College because uh, they've set the stage for what I'm about to say. <laughs> SFU, my, where I work, is undertaking a project much like theirs, uh, where we are getting our metadata from Island Dora 7 out into CSVs, cleaning it up, uh, kind of along the, way, along the lines that they've uh, described, and then using that to ingest into um, Island Dora 8. Our mods is high quality, but it's also highly inconsistent. And uh, we've chosen this approach to migrating from seven to eight because we see an opportunity in uh, the migration to, to make our, our metadata across all of our repositories and even across all of our collections within a given repository much more consistent with the aim of um, boosting findability and user experience and uh, just a good opportunity to sort of um, um, fix some inconsistencies that have crept into our metadata over the years. And that's this, this workflow that I'm portraying here is, is along those lines. Um, this one is I call watch folders and basically it relies on the ability to run Workbench as a command line app application within a scheduled job, like a cron job, you would call it. And that's uh, portrayed on the right hand side in that, in that column, that happy little clock there is intended to signify a scheduled job. Um, so the idea here, idea here is that you have, you run a Workbench every, every night, uh, 1, 1 a.m. or whatever. Um, and the, the data you, that is, that it is, that it is, Putting the pushing up to Islandora is is produced by digitization staff. That's the scanner at the top of the diagram, and as long as they put that metadata and and the and the media files in the right place, as expressed in the input directory and input CSV configuration options, Work, Workbench doesn't need a human to run it. Uh, it just needs to run. So you can schedule the Workbench to run to push stuff up into Islandora, and as long as there's stuff waiting in the locations that the configuration file defines, that stuff would be pushed up. So I think this is something that we've looked at, uh, wanted uh, at SFU for a long time and uh, will very certainly be using the sort of workflow uh, when, we, when we can. Uh, the second to last workflow that I'll describe, I call watch folder and distributed batch loading and it's a uh, hybrid, um, what we've seen in the last slide where we have digitization staff, uh, for example, putting stuff on a, in a network share. The um, workbench is configured via a time scheduled job to run. And then later on, um, right away or whenever is convenient, the uh, metadata um, specialist will come in and use an update um, uh, task in Islander Workbench to supplement and fill out the rest of the metadata that wasn't available during the, the upstream production by the scanning staff. Um, so I think that's something that we'll also be looking at at SFU. And the last workflow I'll describe um, is kind of a variation of the uh, watch folder, but instead of having humans scan something and put it on a, in a predefined location for Workbench to pick up on a schedule job, you do some work to make applications 
that you want to move content from and into Islandora, uh, do that. So for example, you want to, you have an open journal systems instance and you want to also put those, the journal articles and issues in your Islandora repo, it would be very easy to have OJS spit out those issues on publication, for example, and then um, using kind of a time uh, schedule job like we have illustrated here, have that uploaded into Islandora automatically by Workbench. Uh, Archimatica, the same. Um, bespoke systems here in this case means systems that are specific to your institution. At SFU, for example, we have a uh, thesis registration application, um, and this is the exact workflow that we are currently using in our institutional repository, um, not Islandora. Uh, but when we move to our new Islandora institutional repository, we'll be doing exactly this to get theses that are public, approved and published every day into our Islandora uh, IR. So that's all I have to say about uh, Workbench. I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. There is one question in the chat so far, um, asking if it works the other way around. I believe this is referring to the loading objects and putting in meta or loading metadata and putting in objects later. Um, can you upload the media first and later add metadata with Workbench? The metadata is usually what takes longer to create in our organization. Yeah, great question. Um, no, you uh, currently it doesn't do that, but um, that is totally possible. So in this case, what I would, I would imagine is you have a bunch of files, no metadata, just files uh, sitting somewhere and you run Workbench on them and Workbench does need to create a node um, so it would basically take the file name, for example, as the title, create a node, um, uh, a stub node, um, and then um, spit out this file that has the node IDs and, the and whatever metadata it can get. And then you would use that as the basis for later on adding the, meta uh, the, the manually crafted metadata. So if you are interested in that kind of workflow, I encourage you to visit the Islander Workbench uh, GitHub repo and open an issue or contact, uh, contact me directly. I'm happy to do that on your behalf, but that's a very good idea. Do we have other questions? All right, uh, I'm just looking at your documentation now, so apologies if this is covered there, but can you talk about the metadata that you are creating in Islandora 8 via the CSV? Does the CSV create and define Drupal fields and then populate them? Does it generate RDF? No, the fields need to exist. Um, it doesn't create fields for you, um, but it, do, it does populate them uh, with new content, including, as I mentioned, uh, taxonomy terms, if you tell Workbench to do that. But it, it doesn't create fields for you. Um, and again, if you're interested in exploring how it could do that, please let me know. Um, the, the, the challenge with creating work fields is that fields in Drupal are high, they have a lot of configuration behind them that the Drupal user interface, config, uh, the admin interface when you're creating a new field, it hides a lot of the complexity. So the underlying structure of a field can be very surprisingly complex. It's not just necessarily a string, string of text, a simple string. Many are, but many are not. Um, so creating fields on the fly is, I guess, possible. Um, uh, uh, but uh, for a variety of reasons, we haven't done that yet. And to answer your second um, question, Martha, um, it doesn't, Workbench doesn't know anything about RDF, not a thing. That's purely a Drupal configuration thing. So you, what you give it is Drupal field names. It doesn't know anything about RDF. That's Drupal's job. <laughs> 